Mina, Ohio Gazimus, Jesus Freaking Gamer here, back with a 30 minute message. Yes, I'm trying to slowly but surely make up for the 30 minute messages that I have missed recently, and this is one of them. I was supposed to do one for the last two weeks, I think, in a row, uh, and completely and totally and utterly failed. So here I am, Friday morning, near the end of the next week, putting out yet another 30 minute video. I'm trying to catch up. Even if I'm failing miserably, I'm trying to catch up and thought I saw a hair off or something. Yeah. Anyway, I'm trying. That's what counts, right? Right? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we'll keep on trying. Like I've said in so many videos, I'm going to keep on trying until I finally get it right. When will I get it right? I have no idea, but I'm going to keep on trying. This message is much more directed at a Christian audience. This is going to be in regards to our personal evangelistic circles or our personal ministry circles. Our ministry doesn't necessarily have to be evangelistic. It doesn't necessarily have to be talking to those who aren't Christians about Jesus, although that's certainly a big part of it. When we're out and about in the world, unless you're working in ministry, generally speaking, you're going to be surrounded by more non-Christians than Christians. And what that is, is a beautiful opportunity to say, hey guys, I've got some great news for you. I don't know why you're in the lower um, left-hand corner here, but hear me out. I have a great gospel, a great message to share with you. It's about a God who created you, who loves you, and he gave his life for you. And that's a huge, huge part of it. And then there's the other part of it where even if you're not directly sharing the gospel of Jesus, you still want to show them the love of God. <clears throat> you still want to behave in a Christian manner. <clears throat> Apologies, some allergies kicking in there. It talks about in one of the Peters, and I'm not going to mention all the verses. I've got some of the main verses lined up. I'm going to leave some verses out there for you guys to do a little bit of homework. Fact check behind me. Don't just take my word for everything. Look behind me and make sure I'm saying it right. In one of the Peters, it talks about people coming to you and asking you what the hope in you is. So not only are you taking the gospel to those people in the lower left-hand corner there, <laughs> I don't know why I'm going over there, but I am, but it's also a matter of you living a life, speaking in such a way, living in such a way that people see the joy, the happiness, the peace, the love that God brings. And so they come to you and say, hey, something's different about you. What is it? I really want to know. And then th right there, boom, that's an opportunity to share Jesus Christ right there. There we should. So it's not just us pronouncing it and saying, hey, I'm a Christian. You guys need to accept Jesus. That's part of it. That's a big part of it. But it's also living in such a way to where people will come to you and ask about the hope that is in you. That's the way we should be living, a righteous, holy lifestyle set apart from the world. And that there are so many areas that encompasses, and that that's a series of sermons waiting to happen. That's like a, a message. That that's several messages on righteousness and holiness, um, godly living, abstaining from sin, and what those sins are. That that's like that's. <laughs> I really want to say I'll leave that up to your personal preacher and the church you go to because that that is a constant every day. All the time, you know, every week there could be a new topic spoken on on how to live righteously and some sins to stay away from how to stay away from them. That is all the time. But I want to just, I, this for this message, I really want to push the fact that we all have, <clears throat> I want to say either ministry circles or ministry spheres, either way it's circular, but that area around you, we all have areas where we dwell, where we live. We have our homes. And then we're going to have, you know, our mother and father if we're younger, maybe some brothers and sisters if we have siblings. Um, we're going to, you would have school or college. You would have those people that are around you that you directly affect and they directly affect you. Uh, if you're a little bit older or if you're like my age and you have, you, you don't have school anymore, you just have the job, there is the job, the people that you um, function with there, whether it be your bosses or your co-workers or your customers, whatever kind of clientele you may have, whatever kind of business you may, may be running, either you're the boss of your own little business or more than likely you're probably working for somebody. That's by far the majority. Those people, 
though that's also your ministry circle your sphere of influence i think that might be an actual term you can look up and then let's one thing that i honestly forget a lot of the time but i don't want to i want to at least make mention of it here in the video and that you know hey brandon you can point directly at the screen you, that handsome looking face right in the middle there you can learn a little bit about this too your neighbors the people you live around personally just in my life I haven't interacted with my neighbors a lot. It's uh, I have at times way, way, way in the past back in my childhood, but since I've gotten older, maybe it's just because I've become much more of an otaku and gamer slash nerd slash geek. I tend to stay in front of my computer quite a bit of the time, and when I do go out, it's to work or to church or to my friends, people that I'm already familiar with, but when I'm at home, I don't tend to like be out and about in the yard or you know go out on walks or you know invite people over so I'm like hey guys I'm having a cookout all the neighbors come by I don't know I just I don't tend to do that and I haven't lived in a neighborhood that did anything remotely close to that in a few decades now it's it's been at least two decades since I was in a situation even closer similar to that it's just been a really long time but I, I, there's very likely a chance in the future when, you know, when life circumstances change, when my living circumstances change, where I will be out and about and I'll, you know, have my own place and I'll have my own family and there will be neighbors nearby. And I'll probably want to communicate with them. I'll want to talk to them, get to know them. You know, it, it's really nice and helpful to know who's around you, who are your neighbors, who are the people you're, that you're talking with, who are the people that are living close to you. You know, do you have their backs? Do they have yours? What kind of people are they? Saved? Not saved? Friendly? Not friendly? Serious? Uh, party? Uh, professional? Lighthearted? You know, is there drama going on next door? Or is it always a party going on next door? Or is it just, you know, very quiet, very peaceful? Maybe there are people like me. And maybe you, the, the only time you'll see, well, actually, no. I keep, as you guys can see behind me, I actually keep that black curtain down just so when I public, when I put the, out the YouTube videos, lighting's a little bit more controlled in here. So I'm not trying to be antisocial to, or, you know, antisocial to my neighbors or say, you know, forget you out of doors, I want nothing to do with you, although that is mostly true to be completely honest. It's mainly just for, for YouTube. So most of the time, my blinds are down. In fact, in my room all the time, my blinds are down because who knows? I just record when I feel like recording, and once things are in place, I'm like, okay, it's time to record. So, if I need, if if my body needs sunlight, I guess I'll have to get that at some other time, or I'll have to go out of my way to get it because I just don't head out very often. You may have neighbors like that. <clears throat> don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that. I don't know if you guys communicate much with your neighbors or not, or maybe your friends with the people that live close to you. I just personally haven't been in a really, really long time. But regardless, all of those situations, all of those people, they are potential ministry points. And I don't have a verse to really back that up. Well, actually, I guess technically in a sense, I do have a verse to back that up, but they're much more evangelistic in nature. It's much more like, you know, wherever you are, whoever you're around, make sure you are a minister to those people. I, I Most of the verses that I'm looking at are dealing mostly with evangelism, but I want to stress the point of ministry as well. Like I said earlier, it's not just directly you know, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're also to live in a way where the people around you will recognize, not just with your words, like, you know, hey, I'm a Christian, I want to tell you about Jesus. Not just that. And if you're not doing that, I would like to encourage you to have that mindset. And I'll, again, I'll be getting to that in the bulk of the message. But I would like to encourage you, it's not just directly, you know, here's Jesus, get saved, cool, you're saved, on to the next person. No, once people are saved, they, they still need ministry. They still need discipleship. They still need friends. They need um, even that iron that sharpens iron, um, that rubbing and friction. Um, not always pleasant when you're confronting someone with something they're doing, that you don't quite like, or maybe they're confronting you with something that you don't quite like, and you need to pay attention, you need to listen, because that may be God knocking on your heart's door saying, hey son, hey daughter, this is my way of telling you this part of your life needs to shape up. Please pay attention to what these people are saying. 
even if they're not like your favorite kind of people. God can use completely lost people. or And sometimes we get along with, uh, I have several friends that are not Christian at all. Let, let's say the people you don't like. Sometimes those can even be Christians. Those can even be people that, you go to your, that go to your church. You need to be open to listening to them when they say, hey, something's not quite right. You really should work on this. It's not easy to do, but that is also a ministry. And I'm not telling you to go out there and like start rebuking people for everything that they're doing. I'm not saying that, but if they are doing something that's irritating you or something that's you know, you know, know, disturbing you and your life, um, whether it be at work or at home, yeah, by all means, say something and don't do it in some mean, harsh way. Remember that you're a Christian and you want people to know the hope that's inside you. Um, if you're coming across as Mr. Grumpy Face or Ms. Grumpy Face, it's going to be a lot harder for those people to receive the Jesus that's in you. Like You know when people get on your nerves and you really don't want to listen to a word they say, keep that in mind for the people that you're going to be around. They don't want you to be all Mr. Grumpy Pants around them either, or Ms. Grumpy Pants. It'd be a lot easier and nicer if, even, even if there was something wrong, you came at them in a nice, polite, loving, peaceful way. That is by far the preferred way to approach people. Remember, another verse for you to look up behind me, mercy triumphs over judgment. Mercy, gentleness, those are the preferred methods for evangelism, ministry, and pretty much anything else to do in this life. So keep in mind, it's not just direct evangelism. Sometimes it's ministry and friendship and just helping a brother or sister out when they're feeling down. That's part of the ministry that surrounds you as well as evangelism. So let's hop into these verses. First off, the Great Commission itself. Uh, I guess I'd be kind of amiss if I didn't mention this verse. It's almost overused, but it is true. It's accurate, and I can see why it's used so much because it really just kind of nails the point home. It's Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. Jesus speaking to his disciples before he wrote, he, oh, excuse me. He had already risen from the dead. He hadn't yet ascended into heaven. So, Matthew 28, verse 18, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. And I would like to put forward the thought and the notion that Jesus was not just talking to his 12 apostles there. That great commission, and that, that verse is known as the great commission by pretty much every spectrum of Christianity. Feel free to look that up and do some um, research on it. You will find a lot of goodies on that because that's a big topic that the church loves to talk about, which is a good thing. It may be preached a lot, but it is a... It, any truth of the Bible is a good truth. If something in the Bible is being emphasized by the church, then hey, I'm glad the church is on that point. The church is doing that point the way it should. And I would like to put forth the idea that the apostles are not the only ones responsible for that great commission. So what is your great commission? What is, how exactly does that apply? Jesus had a very specific ministry. If you go back just a few chapters to Matthew chapter 15... Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. Uh, I was like, am I on the right? I was like, is this? Yeah, this is the right verse. I was like, wait a minute, this doesn't look right. No, it looks right. I don't know what I was looking at, sorry. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. Absolutely and definitely. Um, if, you look, if you go up a few verses, there's a woman of Canaan, not an Israelite, and she need, her daughter's own sick. Her daughter needs healing. And in verse 24, Jesus said, But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, if you read the rest of the story, she demonstrates faith, and the, and the Lord does indeed um, deliver her daughter via his words. So he does help her, but he was, but he was very mission-centered. I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus had a very, very specific ministry. He had a very specific people group that he was looking to heal. Yes, the whole world was a part of his ministry, and he laid the foundation and the um, bedrock for the church to do what it does. And as a Gentile, I'm incredibly thankful that his ministry included me and that eventually the Gentiles were a part of God's plan. I'm so thankful for that. Glad I know Jesus is my Lord and Savior to this day. But Jesus, when he was here in the flesh, 
he was specifically sent and he maintained throughout his entire ministry talking to Israel talking to the Jews, letting them know that the kingdom was at hand. It was time to repent. Their Messiah was here. That was his ministry. That's what he came to do. And the main bulk of his ministry um, boiled down to the 12 apostles. One fell away, Judas Iscariot. The 12th one was picked back up. If you read on the beginning of the book of Acts, you'll see they replaced Judas with another person who'd been there with, with Jesus' ministry, following Jesus' ministry from the beginning. And from those 12, the entire world heard the good news of Jesus Christ. And you'll, um, if you look into church history at all, you'll see how near the end of their lives, a few of them were martyrs prior to the end of their lives. I forget exactly which ones it were. But a few of the 12 were killed um, you know, early on in the ministry. Even in the book of Acts, it records some of those deaths. But eventually, the bulk of those, of those apostles went out into the world, to various parts of the world. You know, healing, praying, praying for the sick, and having the sick recover, and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And all but John, brother of James, suffered a martyr's death. They went out into the world to evangelize the world and tell them about Jesus. Jesus was sent to Israel. He had a very specific ministry. God probably has a very specific place that he wants you as well. Seek him for it. Ask him about it. Think about it. What's one, at least one? If you're in existence, I'm like, how do I put this? If you're the most introverted person in the world, you have a ministry. You have a place where God wants you to be. Like, I'm not incredibly introverted, but I do love my computer stuff. So I eventually decided, hey, YouTube, let's give that a try. YouTube, I view as my ministry. I have talked to people on this YouTube channel um, via the comments section primarily about Jesus and about views on Christianity and the Bible. And of course, I do the message every single day, whether it's a long message like today or a short message like the bulk of my days. Six days during the week, I do a short message one day of the week, although this week I'm making up for it for lost time. I'm doing a long message. I make sure to talk to people about the Lord. This is my ministry. YouTube's a lot of fun. I love my video games. It's a blast. I also love the Word of God. I love to share what I've learned from the Word of God with you guys. But this is my ministry. This is where I'm supposed to be. If you exist, you have a ministry. Jesus was sent to one specific group of people, and that was Israel. And he, and he focused on that one. He didn't go you know, out to a bunch of different people in a bunch of different nations. He sent the apostles out. They traveled. Jesus, when he was here in the flesh, he had one specific place, and that was Israel. If you're here, you have one specific place. Maybe you are incredibly introverted. Maybe you love to be on the computer like me. But maybe you don't have a YouTube channel like me. Maybe you don't want a YouTube channel like me. If nothing else, the people you live with, like your parents or your siblings or both, or your wife or your children or both, that is your ministry. Your family, if no one else, is your ministry. Um, and if you, I was like, and if you live by yourself, um, you know, you're grown up, you're old, you're moved out. If all, the only socializing you do is when you go to work that day, you know, and um, you know, you have the people that work around you in their cubicles, and you you either eat lunch in the in the break room or you go out to eat somewhere. Those people you work with and the clientele that your um, business helps out and serves in some way, that's your ministry. Those are the people you talk with. Those are the people that you are called to be a minister to. No one is here completely for themselves. I feel like there's a certain religion that actually says that, that encourages you to be on your own. I think it's Buddhism that says like every man is an island under himself, and that is completely wrong. That is nowhere in the Bible. That's nowhere in the Word of God. And of course, you guys know I'm not a Buddhist. I'm a Christian. I would tell you that Buddha is not God. Um, Buddhism is not the way. Jesus is the way. And I'll be getting to that at the end of this message. But no one is here to just be by themselves and do their own thing. I've honestly thought about sometimes how it would be nice to just kind of not have to do anything except for be on my computer, maybe work from there, and like have no interaction or zero, minimal interaction with people and just kind of stay to myself, stay alone. I've had those thoughts. Even though I don't mind being around people, even though in fact I like being around people, sometimes it's just nice to get away. There have been some low points where I've just been like, you know, it'd be nice if everyone would just go away, 
and I was completely by myself, and I just had my anime, my manga, my video games, my internet, I'd be very, very happy with this. Well, I'd be very happy with it. The Lord would not be very happy with me. He has me here for a reason. And right now, YouTube is one of those reasons. I'm not just here to absorb all this knowledge for myself or to think all these things or pray all these things for myself or to enjoy my computer and all the video games I have on and all the fun that it entails for myself. I am here for a reason. I'm here with a purpose. I'm here with a mission. And that mission is telling other people, even if it's only a few, it's telling other people about Jesus who died for me and who died for them who loves me, who loves them, who, who saved me and who wants to save them. That's what I'm here for. And then if you go over to Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Again, this verse is talked about pretty much in tandem with the Great Commission. And it's pretty obvious why. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Jesus speaking, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Again, this is preached on a lot, and usually in tandem with the Great Commission. And it sounds pretty much like almost a retelling or a rewording of the Great Commission. And a lot of the times, these verses are broken down into specific things. And I, I'm going to break it down for you the way I've heard, and I kind of like the way it's heard. Um, Jerusalem, that's the place where you live. Jerusalem is literally your home and the surrounding environment. Jerusalem was their city. Jerusalem is the place where you live, the area, the, the physical location where you dwell, the city, the county, the town, the village where you live. That's a ministry location. Then there is Judea. Now, that's your country. And this, I guess we can think of this more in a church way, but if you're a Christian, you should be a part of the local body of Christ. And they should be focused, uh, everyone's focused on their own sphere and on their own circle. They're also focused on, as a church, they're focused on the community they live in. Being a blessing, being a help, being of service to the community and the town where they are. And also, the country where they live. Judea was the entire country where the apostles lived. Jerusalem was the capital of that country. Um, I live in the United States. So I don't just identify with my county or even my state. I identify with my, own, my whole country. Um, I try to pray for Donald Trump, the president, whether you like him or not. I pray for his cabinet and administration, the House of Representatives, the Senate, the Supreme Court, all the branches of my government. I try to pray for them daily, for wisdom, for accountability, for openness and honesty, for the gospel of Jesus Christ to get to them so they might be saved, because I don't believe that all of them are saved, not at all, regardless of what they may say. Their actions and their votes indicate to me otherwise. But I want to minister to my country. And I want to be a blessing where I'm at, in my state and in my county. I also want to be a blessing to the United States as a whole. And I want my church to be, to be able to minister to my country as a whole. I, I try to be mindful of my culture, of my people of my surroundings so I can be the best possible witness to my fellow Americans as I can be and let them know, hey, Jesus wasn't just a part of America's past. He's relevant even now. He loves you even now. He's alive even now. He wants to save you even now. Please hear the good news of the gospel of the kingdom. Then there is Samaria. Samaria was a country adjacent to them. Now we're branching out a little bit. Um, in America, the closest nations to us would be Canada and Mexico. And obviously, you know, you look at the political spectrum, America has a lot of dealings with Canada and Mexico. As a matter of fact, Canada is America's number one trading partner. I, honestly, I, I forget where I learned that, and I know for a long time I didn't even know that. It should be obvious, though, because they're literally right next door to us. Why wouldn't they be our primary trading partner? They're literally on the same landmass as we are. So, yeah. As the church, we should care about our locale and our region. We should be concerned about where we live. We should be concerned about our country as a whole. We should also be mindful of the countries that are surrounding us. How can we be a blessing, not just to our culture, but to the surrounding cultures? Not giving in, not drawing any quarter, not um, adopting a sinful lifestyle or something that goes against the Bible and the Word of God. But, make, but with all love and in all honesty and in all, in all givingness, and if necessary, rebuke, showing those cultures who Jesus is, 
reaching out to them, loving them, and also letting them know, hey, Jesus is our God. Jesus is our Lord. He's the one that we love, and he's the one that we serve. We'd like to let you get to know who he is. We'd like to share him with you. And then finally, <clears throat> not just our town, our nation, and the nations nearby, to the end of the earth. To the end of the earth. The entire world is our mission ground. The entire world is where we're supposed to minister. The entire place! We're not limited to a single region or a single country or even a single continent. The entire world is our mission ground. And I'm not saying, you know, you need to quit your job and become a missionary or anything like that. I will say the church as a whole should be mission-minded and should be reaching out to places past themselves. From the very beginning, Jesus told the 12 founders of the church, the 12 apostles, you guys need to keep not just yourselves in mind, not just your capital in mind, keep your nation in mind, keep your, the neighboring nations in mind, and finally keep the entire world in mind. Later on in life, like I said, the apostles went out, each to varying nations, to spread the gospel. And we nowadays, not everyone is called to do this, but we do need to be mindful of how can we minister to the world at large. How can we be helpful to our nation, our surrounding nations, and the entire planet? And maybe God is calling some of you to the missionary field. Maybe even through this message right now, God is talking to you and saying, you know, that, that, that last part he talked about right there, that really applies to you. I want to use you, son. I want to use you, daughter, in a much broader and greater way than you've ever imagined. I'd like to invite you right now. I'd like to invite you right now to open up your heart to whatever the Lord may be doing in you. As a believer in Jesus Christ, is God calling you outside of your comfort zone? Is he calling you outside of what you thought was your mission field, outside of what you thought was your zone? Is he telling you to go somewhere else? Is he telling you even possibly to relocate? Go to a completely different land and a people that are not your own? To share the good news of what Jesus has done for you. And so I want to encourage you right now. I'm going to, say, I'm going to shoot up a prayer for you. And I'd like you to join me in this prayer. Say, Father God, I don't know where you're calling me. I don't know why you're calling me, but I welcome you to do in me right now whatever it is that you want to do. If you want me to stay, I'll stay. If you want me to go, I'll go to the ends of the earth, wherever you want me. I may not have, I, I may not have the funds to do it right now, Jesus. I may not have the resources, but if you're calling me, you'll make a way. Show me what you want me to do. Show me where you want me to go. Show me how you want me to get there. Show me what work you have in store for me when I go, make the way, Jesus. I want to serve you. I love you. Amen. And for those of you who don't know Jesus at all, I'm inviting you right now. Like I said earlier, YouTube is my mission field. This is the place where I minister. This is a zone where I'm active. This is a place where I do ministry. And I want to invite you right now, if you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, accept him as your Lord and Savior. Some of you are thinking, I don't know why I watched this whole message. It's a giant waste of time. And if so, before you click away, I just want to say thank you for giving me the time of day. Thank you for considering what I had to say. I greatly appreciate it. Even if you think I'm full of malarkey, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to listen to me and just make me a part of your day. That's awesome. Some of you are thinking, this Jesus thing is really getting to me. I've heard about him. Or maybe you're just hearing it for the first time, but something just rings true. Something just rings right. You realize that you need God's help. You realize that you need Jesus. Can I just invite you right now to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? You don't, need, you don't necessarily need to pray a prayer that I've prayed or say some specific rote routine pattern thing. Just in your own words, telling him that you believe he died on the cross for you. That he rose from the dead. That you need forgiveness for your sins. He'll forgive you. And if you want a model prayer to follow after, pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. I believe you died on the cross for me, shedding your blood for the forgiveness of my sins, and that you rose again. 
Please, Jesus, come into my life right now. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer or a prayer in your own words, congratulations, you are a Christian. God heard that prayer. He was right on it. And you are now a member of the family. Welcome to the church. Welcome to the house of the living God. It is good to have you. If I can encourage you before I close this video, read this Bible. Maybe, well, maybe this, this is my Bible. Uh, please don't take it from me. I, I like it a lot. But if I could encourage you to get your own Bible, if you don't have the funds or the money, you have the internet or you wouldn't be watching this message, there's free Bibles online. If you could read just a little bit of that every single day to let you know what your God thinks and feels about various things going on in the world. Find a church home. Find a group of people who believe in Jesus like you do, who believe in the Bible, that it's the Word of God, and just get to know those people. Go and talk to them. Even if you're introverted, even if it's a little bit difficult, try to find some people that you can connect with and plug in with because it is so helpful when you are talking to people who believe the same thing as you. Finally, if you could just shoot up a little prayer every day, even if it's as simple as, Jesus, thank you for the day, or Jesus, this day sucks, I hate it, please help me. Those are prayers. Those quick little statements God hears and answers. Guys, thank you very much for giving me the time of day and for watching this video. I love you. And God bless.